When you partner with Axon, you immediately gain access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. We carry all major brands and sizes of tires and wheels. We specialize in large diameter wheels for large equipment. We have one of the largest OEM replacement wheel inventories in North America. Known for extreme flotation setups, duals, and triples, we have wheels for all makes and models of tractors, sprayers, combines, and grain carts. If we don't have the wheel in stock, we'll custom build, sandblast, and paint in-house. There isn't a more vast inventory in North America dedicated to helping dealers move more iron. With facilities on the West Coast and in the heart of the Midwest, leverage our 230,000 square feet of indoor inventory to solve any problem a grower may have. Move more iron with Axon. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast. This is this Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Valley Transportation. I've got Brad Graff and Parker Johnson on here again to talk about what's happening in the world of uh, over the road trucking. So, Brad, how you doing, man? Good. How are you? Good, man. Parker, how you doing, bud? Excellent. Yourself? No, if I was any better, I couldn't stand it. So things are <laughs> things are moving right along, buddy. Um. Brad, let's talk a little bit about what's happening up your neck of the woods. So you're up in in Minnesota, up there in northern. Um, northern corn belt up in that area what are you seeing out there right now and, and how things how are things progressing i guess you know i think as far as the the farmers go i think the majority of them are all finished up uh, we got a few stragglers left but yeah. got a lot of rain here in the past three four days so things are looking good we're getting heat it looks like next week's supposed to be in the mid to upper 70s all week so yeah. should be should be good for the growing season Yep, absolutely. Parker, you do a little farming on the side there. How's your uh, situation? Yeah, everything looks great. Uh, everything's in the ground. Uh, most everything is out of the ground. And I, myself, I do a little bit of organic. So I'm hoping to, hoping to get that planted here this weekend or into next. Uh, usually with organic, you plant a little bit later to try to let the, let the first round of weeds kind of come in so you can kind of terminate them before, before planting, you know, you can't use any chemicals to get rid of it so you kind of got to go by what the weather lets you do and and uh try to get some of them weeds taken care of before before getting it in the ground yep yeah we got a lot of organic weed out where we're at here and so a lot of that we see a lot of guys doing some, some like uh various corn varieties and stuff like that too so so yeah it's uh you uh you make a little more on what you on what you're selling but you also have a, a lot of more luck involved we're on a lot more yeah. than what other guys are. That's for sure. And <clears throat> the price, you got a lot more time invested into it too, you know, with the, with the cultivating and different ways you got to take care of the weed management. And, but yeah, I mean, the price definitely helps. And uh, the nice thing is the, the price doesn't fluctuate like how the, how the conventional stuff changes. <clears throat> like I was just talking to my, uh, my seed salesman the other day and I think, I think organic corn is still around 11 bucks a bushel, which that's what I sold to for last fall. And, and, uh, which is nice because you, you look at the conventional prices and it's, uh, it's changed a lot since fall. Yeah. It has definitely changed a lot since the fall. No doubt about that. No doubt about that at all. So, well, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about this, Brad, you brought this up before when we were getting ready to take a kind of run down some stuff to look at before we uh, started here and, you started talking a little bit about some carbon emissions that were coming down the pike. So talk about that a little bit. I know the California uh, air, whatever that stands for. Um, I know that they've, they've had those in place for how long now, 10 or 15 years. Yeah. Like that. And it is some of that's pretty much stayed in California. Some of that's spread out to some neighboring States and those kind of things. But I guess talk a little bit about some of these emissions, things you see happening now. Well, I think, you know, they're, they're talking about zero emissions on small engines by the end of 24, I believe it is, um, yeah. you know, so they're going to be lawnmowers and, and weed eaters and whatever, whatever uh, small engines you got are going to have to be all electric. Yeah. So um, that that's changing. Things are going to change there. Um, 
they're they're claiming uh by 2027 that the motors for for over the road trucks are going to be 15 to 000, to 20,000 dollars more per per truck just to get them within in compliance with uh what the regulations are going to be in that year so that's going to be a a huge factor in anybody going west with uh with stuff you know we sit out here in minnesota and our guys are pushing just as hard to get this to follow the same rules so um hopefully hopefully we don't get to that point but uh someday we will i think yep so, so are they talking like this is uh like they did in the when california rolled those out they had that uh basically everything past a certain year date had to have our model year i'm sorry had to be uh destroyed or taken off the road or whatever it was yeah yeah like yep. Are they talking so I think that's going to be the same thing you know they're going to they're going to get that in place and they'll get the new regulation and then uh, after after that year you know that it'll, it'll be a phase in program I'm sure you know but but they tend to get it done fairly rapidly so so when you roll up to the uh to that to where the dome starts there uh, that goes around California uh all right on uh, the Nevada border do you yeah. have go real fast and just take your straps off and let everything fall off. So you don't have to, <laughs> you don't sit there and idle or how's that work? Well, I think they're going to let us in being, being that we're not registered okay. in, in the state of California to, for the time being, the way it looks. Um, once, once they get it all in compliant, you know, they'll start, they'll start uh, setting dates on when, when anybody coming in there has to be up, up to current code carb, carb emissions to standards too. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're expecting there's going to be a lot more coming. That's for sure. So do you start in your, in your uh, mind here, when you start thinking about this kind of stuff, do you start foreseeing warehousing things right on the Nevada, um, I don't you know. I, I just don't know if that's uh, economically feasible, you know, to, to think that you're going to transfer every load going in there. Um, it, it's definitely an option, but I don't know that it's a good one. You know, by the time you, you switch things around and especially for us guys hauling iron, you know, you're, you're looking at cargo claims and, and, and bigger problems just by unloading and reloading. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot goes into that. And then, then the factor of, of who's going to do it, you know, so it, uh, it, it, it's going to be a, an issue. It, 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 there's, there's no doubt that it's going to be more expensive for people taking deliveries in California. Yeah. So, yeah. You're looking at, there's going to be a, a, uh, a 49 state rate. And then there's a California rate. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's going to be, a, I mean, it might be cheaper to send stuff to Hawaii than it is to go to California. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be crazy. So it'll I guess be, like, it'll be different for all the exporters, you know, the people that bring stuff into the, in the port of Long Beach or Port Wyneme or something to ship overseas. Like, yeah, they're probably just going to end up shipping it to Galveston or, or Baltimore, you know, and just yeah. trying to stay out of California. Yep. Yeah. And that adds time to everything too, especially if you're going to Asia, you know what I mean? Or in, especially, right. um, uh, Western Africa or Eastern Africa, you know, you start looking at those kind of places and, and, it's going to be tough because now you got to go, if you go to Galveston, you got to go all the way down and go through uh, the Panama Canal or, or uh, all the way down around South America and back around or go to, through the Atlantic and go back down around the Horn of Africa and back around or into the Mediterranean or Black Sea or something. Right. Just, like, now you all of a sudden you've got, and the Black Sea is really a cool place to try to ship to right now. So, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, uh, that kind of opens up a, a pretty big, uh, pretty big portal there. California is notorious for some of the stuff too, where they'll put these kind of things in play, but then they'll say, well, if you're not from California, then uh, we understand this isn't feasible. Uh, so we're going to, you know, we're going to move this, this line, you know, back to, you know, five years from now, we'll, we'll, we'll readdress it in five years. You know, I'll give you five more years. Yeah. Later. You know, it's, it's things like that, that you see come out of California sometimes that you kind of shake your head at, you know, like <laughs> a good one. Like last year there was a, California comes out and says, Hey, you know what? We're going to be all electric cars by 2030. Right. And the very next news thing was, uh, you know, people, uh, officials are asking people in California not to charge their electric cars because they might crash the electric grid because of uh, all the air conditioners running. I mean, so it's things like that where 
you know, right these kind of things pop up and california's notorious for that where they're in 2030s are drop dead date and then well it's now it's 2035 and you know so on and so forth so um it, it'll be interesting yeah. watching how that plays out too because that's gonna like you said if you got to retrofit your trucks or go buy new trucks and spend an extra 20 or would you say 15 to twenty five thousand? Yeah, fifteen to twenty. They're claiming just for the motor alone. So, yeah, so I mean, they're already expensive enough, and then you throw another fifteen or twenty grand on top of that just to make sure you get the right emissions stuff yeah. on before you retrofit it or whatever it is that you're doing. There'll it, be a lot of carriers that just don't do it. They just well, I'm, I'll run the other the other lower forty seven states. They ain't gonna go to California. Right. Yeah, and that'll be that'll be. Well, you'll drive the price up for anything getting delivered out there because there's only you know certain people that can get get it done. Yep, and you know how that works on a on a closed loop system like that. There's uh, it tends to be more expensive for sure. Yeah, definitely for sure, huh? Well, like I said, I hope they hold off 15 years. I'll be retired, Casey. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else's problem at that point. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it to Parker. That's right. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, that's that's something to pay attention to because that's going to be a because that'll that'll affect all kinds of things too, and not just over the road trucks. You start looking at um, right like emissions just for equipment too, and what that looks like. And the yep, it'll be the same thing. Yeah, right. that'll, be, that'll be a whole thing there. All right, uh, Parker, you brought something up that we were talking about when we got started. You take a look at some of the the prices that we see right now for um, new crop corn and whatnot. Um, it's in the 440 range. You start looking at penciling some of that stuff out. One of those things kind of fall in. I am starting to see a movement in in what we see in in, in equipment right now, where there's being, you know, two years ago it was the latest, you know, late model low hour stuff that was really on fire, and not so much the the middle of the road stuff that was there. A couple right. reasons for that one was the late model low hour stuff was was available. And right. And then the other stuff was the stuff getting traded in. So, you know, kind of working through that. So now we're starting to see that, that I've always kind of said a softening market when you're looking at the, the middle of the road, hour range stuff and, and price range stuff. So if a, the average price of a combine is 400,000 bucks and you're seeing 200 to $150,000 combines being sold more rapidly than the other side, then, you know, just guys are showing up with, with less money and, or, or different mindsets of what they're doing and those kind of things. Um, you start seeing that thing move around. Starting to see that work happen now. We're starting to see some things move. Um, if you throw some lower crop prices into the mix, you could see uh, the market getting a little more stagnant than than, than we're starting to see it get now. Um, I guess exactly. there's looking around, Parker. Talk a little bit about the amount of freight you're seeing being moved around and some stuff you guys are working with. <clears throat> you know, right now the the numbers are low, uh, but every spring it's it changes, you know, once, once guys get in and out of the field, you know, people might start picking up, uh, picking up the phone, calling around uh, to replace the planter that they just got done planting however many thousands of acres with, you know, um, and same with, same with row crop tractors, I would imagine. Um, summertime is usually a lot busier than spring. So I'm hoping it, I'm hoping it turns around, but yeah, looking at, looking at the uh, new crop corn prices, that, that could be different this year, you know, you're looking at 440 corn instead of 640. Right. And, um, you know, people, people might hold on to that piece of equipment for an extra year and instead of trading it off to get something bigger and better, right. um, you know, which obviously you see and we see too, you know, if, if you ain't selling it, we ain't moving it. Right. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it turns around and, and, uh, and gets a little bit back to, back to what it was, but, Hard, hard telling right now watching the markets you know every day it's in the red it seems yeah. like yeah the last usd report came out and had some had some i mean it wasn't bearish it wasn't bullish it was just kind of there so of course that's going to play uh, into that factor and we're going to see how things get through the uh let's playing season and because right now even if you look at the average the five-year average on planting their corn plane is like i can't remember what it was yesterday it was like 10 percent higher than normal right so right so the the traders all look at that. Like, this is going to be, <laughs> be the best year ever, you know. And then it rained last week, so now, oh my God, now it's just we're just we're going to have corn coming out of our ears, you know. So now that's and that 
there's a long ways to go before <laughs> before we make any kind of crop. So it'll be interesting to watch this year and see what happens. You know, if you know Sean okay. is on here quite a bit, talks a lot about um, what's going on there with the weather and what that looks like. And you know, Chip Nelliger brought something up the other day too that he he made a good point on was you know the price of wheat, where it's at right now, and then all the stuff that's connected to wheat and how those things play together, and that wheat could just you know if Russia decides they're not gonna do this uh keep a few bushels back for themselves and quit selling stuff and let the price kind of come up um right we could really control the marketplace so then all of a sudden you see all these things move around so it's it's one of those deals where if i could guess the market we probably wouldn't be talking right now you know we'd be i'd be on my i'd be on my beach on my private uh, island with my yacht parked off the uh off the shoreline there and uh enjoying life but it's a uh it's a crazy thing and, and there's so many other things out there right now too that are that are kind of influencing buying patterns right now if you look at interest rates and what's happening there and what the fed's doing and those kind of things but i will keep i'll say you know we've had some of the best months ever um at the dealership you know but a lot of that too is the stuff that was delayed um getting in it's showing up now so now that's we're we're getting a chance to sell that stuff so um continuing to see um and sir, I guess, and I like I like you guys' opinion on this too. When I talk to my guy, it's not uncertainty that I feel. It's more they're not for sure. I, mean, I guess I guess that is uncertain, but they're not really for sure what they need to be doing where because we have a lot of customers, and I'm sure you guys see the same thing that are the next generation's coming in and they're trying to figure out how do I, you know, add the four thousand acres I need or whatever you know to to keep. To, to grow the operation stuff like that i mean when you guys are out and about talking to people whether it's on in the trucking side or farming or whatever it is are you kind of feeling the same thing like there's just this big kind of upheaval with, with generationally where people just trying to figure out what to do what the next move is going to be to bring whomever back into into the operation no i think you see that a lot nowadays i mean you just the 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 people that are getting older and, and ready to retire, you know, a lot of them don't have anybody to bring in to, to turn it over to either, you know, so that becomes a problem. And then the big guy gobbles up the, the little guy type type scenario in those cases. And, and uh, you lose that smaller business owner too, you know, so I think you see that in ag dealerships. Uh, you, we've been seeing that for years in ag dealerships and construction dealerships, everybody, you know, so. Yep. Yeah, they... yeah, and exactly what you said there. Like, <clears throat> my dad, my dad's getting a little bit older, and I mean, we only run, you know, seven or eight hundred acres. You know, it's not nothing huge, you know, compared to people here in Grand Meadow. But, you know, he, the past couple of years, he's given me opportunities that, you know, to buy buy something that he had a chance at, but gave it to me instead. You know, he's he's getting older and wanting to slow down, and and uh, actually, uh, at our other farm that we rent, the the lady has like forty two acres in CRP that comes out this fall, and and uh, he's given me the opportunity to to run that for next year. So, and and that's exactly it. Like trying to, I'm trying to use his equipment to try and try and build a little bit of, you know, a little bit of money. So when it comes to it, I have it, I have it sitting around. Right. And yeah. uh, you know, just like everybody else, I talked to a few people this week. A guy was kind of taking over his dad's farm, and same deal. He was talking about, you know, how how's he going to do it with the interest rates the way they are, and and uh, you know, trying to trying to grow and and his dad isn't quite out of it yet, but you know he's trying to get some st stuff lined up for himself until that does come. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the million dollar question, man. Is how do you make it all come together? And right, do you, when you can figure all that out, then you'll be you'll be doing good. Are you see Are you seeing the interest rates affect sales in all, Casey? Or are you, you still I can't able say to... that, I can't say that I'm seeing that. Um, some people that were on the fence kind of maybe pushed them away from doing it but i don't i can't sit here and tell you that i think that interest rates are playing and have an effect on us because we're having amazing months i mean so it's right um across the board new and used stuff. i mean it's just things are moving along we're in a good position used equipment wise i mean we've got I, I can't say that when i look at um everything out there i just i talk to dealers that say that oh man interest rates are killing us but I look at what we're doing and I, I don't, I just don't see, I don't see that pressure yet. Yeah. There's, 
there's a lot of there's still a lot of capital out there you know there's still a lot of guys out there that have got cash that that they're that they're sitting on i mean we're, we've seen more you know 50 percent down payments and those kind of things than right where else because they've got the capital and they'd rather pay just for looking at it from an interest perspective and those kind of things and tax situations and all that you know it's just uh it's like a a little bit better of a opportunity for him to really um get get a better equity position in a piece of equipment where you got to fight the the inflationary and uh interest rate um pressures that we're seeing right now so i mean yeah we're seeing just just the cash is, is there and 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 so i think some lenders maybe gotten a little scared because they you know you sit there and talk to a guy and you sit down with him and they were going to give you a million dollars this year to go out and do whatever and guy comes back in and says yeah well that million dollars you gave me we thought that was right actually it's going to be a million five is what i need to do the exact same thing i did last year right so now how how banks and stuff are kind of reassessing what they're what they're doing i had a conversation with the lender the other day and you know hey we budgeted x and it's y and it's nothing that the, you did or nothing that the customer did it's just everything's gone up so quick so fast that what we thought was enough is was nowhere near enough. And so that's that whole conversation is coming into play too, where you're seeing more and more folks doing um, just some, you know, a little, little squirminess there and you're right. talking about banker, you know, than, than they've had in the past, you know, that's for sure. So, so as you guys take a look, what's going on now, looking out into the summer, I guess, Brad, some of the stuff that's on your mind right now, talk a little bit about what you see happen on your van side and, and is that slowing down, picking up? I mean, talk a little bit about, about some, some headwinds you have in front of you right now. Uh, you know, slowing down, I'm, you know, it's, it's definitely down a little from what it was in the booming years here in the past two years, you know, but uh, I think really what we're seeing is a little bit back to normal um, you know, we're getting the prices are correcting and, and getting back to kind of where they're manageable for everybody. And, and, uh, you know, the, it, it needed to slow down a little bit. We, we're starting to pick up more drivers, uh, every week, just because I think there, there's some markets out there that are pretty slow and they're not uh, staying busy enough. So they're jumping, jumping ship and moving around a little bit. So sure. we tend to kind of like it to see it slow down a little bit at least uh we get our seats back full and 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 things uh kind of level off a little bit so yeah um looking into the summer right i mean uh it it seems slow to the guys right now but this this month looks looks to me like it's going to be one of the bigger months all year so it, if it keeps going the way it has been so that uh that's pretty promising so we had uh, had a few months early on January and February where we were really slow, you know. It, uh, but that had a lot to do with the weather and and all the snow we were getting and trucks parked all over in snowstorms. So yeah, you know those things. You know they just enter into into what what happens here and the struggles we have. So yep, yeah, sure. Parker, what are you seeing out there? <clears throat> Same thing, you know. Back to things are getting back to normal. You know we're we're getting caught up, which is which is definitely nice and. Um, you know, trucks are, trucks are moving and freight's getting delivered, you know, very, <clears throat> in a, in a very timely fashion, you know, compared to when we were at our busiest last, last year, when you might, might be waiting two or three weeks to get your new tractor and, <clears throat> and nobody really wants that. And, and, uh, you know, right now it's stuff's getting picked up fast and you're getting, getting calls, uh, people complimenting you on, on how fast you're getting stuff done instead of vice versa, where they're calling, where's my stuff. <laughs> so it's, it's a uh, it's a nice relief compared to compared to that, but I think uh, I think it'll really pick up here this summer and get back to moving the freight. Yep, right on, man. Well, good deal. Sounds like things are moving in a good good uh, a good direction for everybody here, and and we're seeing some some movement and things are picking up and I guess changing. I guess is the best word to use there. Don't know for sure what's ahead of us, but it's changing. So good times. Brad, I appreciate you guys being on here. Brad, you got any final thoughts or anything like that for you to throw out before we shut down? No, I don't think so, Casey. I, I really appreciate you having us. Yeah. No, I enjoy it too. Parker, you got anything you want to put out there? No, nope, I think I covered everything I wanted to for today. All right. Well, Brad, if folks want to reach out to you and get more information about Valley Transportation, what's the best way to do that? 
Uh, bgraff at valleytransinc.com or the 800 number, 800-657-4910. Right on. Parker, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, shoot me an email at pjohnson at valleytransinc.com or you can give me a call at 800-657-4910. Right on. Well, guys, I really appreciate you being on the podcast and I, I enjoy working with you and I look forward to next month. All right. Thanks, Casey. Right on, guys. I'm Thank Casey. You. I'm Casey Seymour with Moving Iron Podcast. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC, LinkedIn at Moving Iron Podcast, and go over to the YouTube channel, see the video version of this at the Moving Iron Podcast YouTube channel. Go to Moving Iron LLC for everything Moving Iron related and all the information for the Moving Iron Summit coming up here in Nashville, Tennessee, September 11th through the 13th. You're going to see Brad and his gang up there, and uh, they'll have their booth space up there. So you're going to check them out, do that while they're there. So uh, with that, I'm Casey Seymour with Brad and Parker. Let's go smile, folks. In the 21st century Hard-working people Working hard for you and me Moving higher Time and time again